The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. If there's one thing I'm known for, it's inexpensive tools and bargain shopping. So today we're gonna take a fairly inexpensive Stanley Block plane and turn it into something that's not a complete pile of garbage. Step one, perhaps the most difficult part of this entire process is removing the plane from the packaging. So let's see what we're up against. The plane seems to be in decent shape. The adjustable mouth works fine, but the sliding plate is definitely a little bit proud. We'll have to fix that. I'll release the cam lever and loosen the set screw so that I can pull off the cap and get to the iron. New planes are usually covered in rust preventative, so that's why it's kind of goopy. And while the block plane really doesn't need to be 100% flat to do its job, I'd still like to see how far out it is. We have three significant high spots, or low spots depending on your perspective. We'll have to fix that too. I'll start by haphazardly spilling mineral spirits on the workbench and getting some of it on the plane. I just want to remove any grease that's on the surface. Now I'll reassemble the plane. While we could push forward with the flattening and the sharpening process, I think it's actually more beneficial to test the plane out exactly as it comes from the manufacturer. After all the work you're about to put into this thing, wouldn't it be nice to actually see an improvement instead of just assuming that it's better? Now this is a piece of cherry side grain. The rough edge actually cleans up pretty well. I can add an edge profile pretty easily too. Now it's a little bit rough, but honestly, it's not too bad. Obviously this video is more impactful if I show you how crappy this thing cuts, uh, but at this point, the results are the results. So yeah, maybe calling it a pile of garbage was a little bit unfair. Now on end grained, it is struggling a bit. The blade could definitely use some love, but we'll get to that soon. A mistake a lot of folks make when doing this process is they strip the plane down before flattening it, but the sole of the plane can actually change a little bit when it's under pressure and fully assembled. So we'll do our flattening with everything assembled, but the blade safely retracted. So let's flatten the sole. I'm taping some 220 grit automotive sandpaper down to my table saw. It's a nice flat surface that'll provide a good reference for flattening. A couple of spritzes of water and we're ready to go. Now obviously, you'll want to clean up any water that gets on the cast iron as soon as you're done here. I keep the table pretty well waxed, so a little bit of water exposure just isn't much of an issue. With the blade retracted, I rub the plane on the sandpaper as evenly as possible. Without a doubt, this is the part that sucks. I can see this 220 is just a bit too fine for the amount of material that I need to remove, and I've got a jazzercise appointment at 4, so I need to get this thing moving. If you're careful about it, you can actually use something like a stationary belt sander or a disc sander to speed things up. You have to be careful though because it's pretty easy to remove too much material and really do more harm than good. I'm using a very light touch, keeping the plane moving at all times. I also take frequent breaks, let the plane cool down and check my progress. While I'm here, I may as well clean up the sides too. Now if you don't have a powered solution, you just have to put in the elbow grease and you can pick up some lower grit sandpaper to use for that heavier stock removal. Now I'll head back to the sandpaper at the table saw and try to clean up the marks from the disc sander. You can see the heel and the toe aren't absolutely perfect, but I really don't want to remove any more material at this point. This is definitely flat enough. Now it's really not totally necessary, but I'm going to try to polish up the sole a little bit using a water stone. By the way, we're working on a series of beginner-focused projects, so I bought specific tools to help with that. That includes this plane and this two-sided water stone. The stone gets a good soak in water for about 15 minutes before putting it to use. Now I can get a nice arm workout, polishing the sole using the coarser side of the stone. Now let's grab our steel ruler and see how we did. Now in case you forgot what it looked like from the factory, here's the before. And here's the after. It's a big improvement. I'll add a nice coat of wax as the freshly honed iron can rust pretty quickly. Now let's remove the plain iron. The first thing we need to do is flatten the back. We'll start with the coarser side of the stone. The entire back doesn't need to be flat but I'll at least work on the bottom inch or so. 
After the initial work, I can flip the blade over and see what we're up against. Thankfully, uh, while there's a big high spot in the middle there, the blade really isn't too bad. You can see we're already getting a decent polish near the tip of the iron, and that's the most critical area. Let's continue polishing just to see how flat we can get it. To help gauge my progress, I like to mark the blade with a sharpie. When the marker lines are gone, I know that that area is flat. Now we can repeat this process on the finer side of the stone. If you're not having as much luck as I am and your plain iron is in really bad shape, I recommend you look up the ruler trick. It's a really big time saver when flattening a large section of the iron isn't panning out for you. Now we're going to work on the bevel, back to the coarse side of the stone. Sharpening freehand does take some practice. If you slowly tilt the blade up, you should be able to feel the point where the flat of the bevel is in full contact with the stone. That's the sweet spot. From there, drag the blade back in a smooth pass. Now some people have better luck doing a little zigzag dance like this, but personally, I get better results when I reset for each pass and pull the blade back toward me. Now many of you probably already know that I'm a big fan of honing guides. These are slick little devices that hold your blades and chisels in fixed positions and it makes the sharpening much easier, especially if you don't do this stuff every single day. Just snug up the blade and find the angle that puts the bevel nice and flat on the stone and then tighten it up. I find this is not only less stressful mentally, but also physically on my hands. Now we don't need the bevel to be a perfect mirror across the entire thing. We really only want to worry about the very tip. So if you pause once in a while and run your finger perpendicular to that tip, you should feel a metal burr when you're there. Now this tells you that you're ready for the next grit. If you don't feel a burr, keep honing. We'll repeat this process on the finer side of the stone. Once again, I'll look for that burr to develop. Once it does, I'll flip the blade over and hone the back again on the highest grit, and that'll remove that little burr. This really shouldn't take but a couple of passes. Now it's probably not totally necessary, but I like to repeat those two steps, creating the burr once more and then removing it again. I honestly don't know if it makes any real difference, but it certainly makes me feel better. So now we can dry everything off, add a little wax to the iron, and then reassemble the plane. If the mechanism isn't running smoothly, you can always add a drop of oil or even some wax to the screw. Now, let's test this bad boy out. Of course, this edge was already hit with the plane when it was right out of the box, but you can probably see and hear how much smoother the plane is gliding across the surface. It's taking a lot less effort, and the resulting surface is much smoother. <laughs> That's smooth. Now, end grain always tends to fight you a little bit, and thankfully, I don't actually have to plane end grain very often, but it's definitely easier now that the blade is sharpened up. I was having so much fun here, I decided just to do the rest of that cherry board on the edge, just to see if I can get some nice continuous shavings. And those are some pretty nice curly cues. So as you can see, with a little bit of sweat equity and a whole lot of sandpaper, you could take a fairly inexpensive plane and turn it into something that is performing as good as it can perform. Now, is this as good as some of the premium brands out there? I don't think so, but it doesn't have to be. You could still get great results from it and you just gotta put a little bit of time and effort into it. All right, so thank you for watching everybody. And uh, remember, I'm the bargain guy. I'm the guy who recommends the inexpensive things. That's just what I'm telling people now.